Hello, my lovelies. Today we're diving in one of the most mesmerizing corals in the hobby, the flower pot coral known as the Ganeopora. Known for its hypnotic polyp extension and stunning swaying motion, Ganeopora has both been loved and feared in reef tanks. We're gonna unpack everything you need to know, species differences, hardiness, feeding, lighting, flow, selection tips, and my personal pro hacks to keeping this coral thriving in your reef tank. Stick around because we're busting some myths too. So let's start off with what is a Ganeopora coral? This has long flowing polyps that resemble underwater daisies. There are over 20 species, but in the reefing hobby, a few have stolen the spotlight. We'll get into species in a second. In the wild, they're found from Indo-Pacific to the Red Sea, growing in turbid waters and shallow lagoons where light, nutrients, and flow are all moderate. But here's the kicker. For years, Ganeopora had a reputation as being the impossible coral to keep. Corals would look great for a few months and then slowly decline. Today, we know a lot more, and success is absolutely possible if you understand their needs. So let's go species by species for a second because they're not all created equal. Let's start with the Ganeopora stokies, known for very long, elegant polyps, and it has a softer skeleton. It's one of the more common species, but it's also one of the trickiest ones long-term. It needs careful flow and feeding requirements. Next, let's check out the Ganeopora columna. This has a more compact growth with shorter polyps, a bit more forgiving, making it a better choice for beginners testing the waters. The next one is the Ganeopora digiportiensis, and I'm sure I butchered that. This one has beautiful, thicker branches and can tolerate a wider range of lighting and flow. If you're looking for a hardier option, this is a strong candidate. Let's also mention the Alveopora, often mistaken for Ganeopora. This has fewer tentacles per polyp, usually 12, compared to Ganeopora's 24. Alveopora is generally much hardier and is a great stepping stone before committing to a true Ganeopora. When selecting your species, ask the suppliers for the species ID. If they don't know, pay attention to polyp structure and growth form. And let's be honest, Ganapora used to be the coral people just warned you about. But with modern aquaculture and better husbandry, their care is much more manageable. The cool news is there are aquacultured frags that are vastly hardier than wild colonies. However, these are not set and forget type of corals like mushrooms or leathers. Ganeopora appreciate active care and in return, they will reward you with incredible growth and hypnotic motion. Let's dial in the specifics of their water parameter needs. Temperature needs to be 76 to 78 Fahrenheit, which is 24.4 to 25.5 Celsius. Salinity needs to be 1.025 to 1.026 specific gravity. Nitrates between five and 15. Make sure you're avoiding ultra low nutrient systems. Phosphate should be 0.03 to 0.1 ppm. Lighting needs to be moderate to high par, around 150 to 250. Make sure you start lower and ramp up slowly to prevent bleaching. The flow needs to be moderate but random. They need to keep the polyp swaying and not blasted. Too little and the debris settles too much, and too much and the polyps will stay retracted within the coral. Here's the game changer, feed your Ganeopora. In the wild, they feed heavily on plankton and dissolved organics. Live phytoplankton is a great addition and you wanna target feed two to three times per week with a turkey baster or a pipette as well. Make sure you turn off the flow when feeding to let the polyps capture the food effectively. In captivity, you will need to supplement their diet with coral foods like Reef Roy's, Polyp Lab, or any other powdered plankton. Aim to target feed two to three times per week with a turkey baster or a pipette. And remember, feeding stimulates growth, polyp extension, and overall health. Underfed Ganeopora tend to recede over time. Even if the water parameters are perfect, they are big eaters. <laughs> On to placement. When thinking about your Ganeopora, think about two things, flow and aggression. These polyps extend their polyps several inches, so make sure they have room to stretch out. They are moderately aggressive, so these beautiful tentacles that can sway can also sting nearby corals, especially SPS or softies. Place them mid-level to lower in the tank to start. Avoid placing your aggressive LPS like Euphelia or torch corals because they can get stung as well. Monitor your flow carefully. You want a gentle sway and not whipping tentacles. Pro tip here, if you see polyps staying short and stubby, they're stressed. So reevaluate your lighting and your flow. Let's talk about a few tips to help you pick out a healthy Ganeopora. There's a few things that you wanna look out for. First one is gonna be polyp extension. Active swaying polyps are a great sign that the coral is healthy and happy. Number two is no tissue recession. Check where the polyps meet the skeleton for bare patches. 
Number three, healthy color, vibrant and not pale. And number four is aquacultured whenever possible. They adapt to captive life far better than wild colonies. Ask your supplier about the coral's origin and history. Don't be shy. All right, my lovely, let's finish this video with my rapid fire pro tips. Don't chase ultra clean water, gonoporia like nutrients, dose trace elements, iron, manganese, and iodine promote health, inspect regularly for pests like flatworms and nudibranx, target feed at night, they often extend their feeders more after the lights are out, use activated carbon cautiously, heavy carbon can often strip beneficial organics, and remember, if you start to see polyp retraction, start with flow and feeding checks before panicking about water chemistry. So there you have it, the full Gunneopora game plan. With the right care, these corals will absolutely flourish in your tank, providing non-stop movement and a pop of color that is hard to beat. If you've ever been nervous about trying one, I hope this guide gives you the confidence to give them a go. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and drop a comment with your experience keeping Gunneopora. Tell us in the comments what coral we should dive into next. And as always, happy reefing.